Hi everyone, I'm Nick the Veterinary Guy, and today we're talking all things clickers. Do they suffer? Do they love? Are the original people still in there? Are they conscious? And should you feel a wrecking guilt for every single one that you've killed? These terrifying creatures were once human, but have been taken over by the Cordyceps fungus. So, do they have any humanity left? Let's find out. God damn it. Clicker. Jeez. What's wrong with its face? That's what years of infection will do to you. We all know that the Cordyceps fungus in The Last of Us is based on a real-life fungus, mainly Ophiocordyceps unilateralis, which turns ants into creepy zombies, then kills them and grows a fungal fruiting body out of the ant to reproduce. Yikes. In reality, the fungus controls the ant by spreading through its muscles, not its brain. Research has even shown that the fungus doesn't enter the ant's brain at all. Instead, a fungal network develops all throughout the ant's muscles, controlling its movement. The ant, once infected with this fungus, descends to the forest floor and starts walking into a random direction. I obviously cannot comment on what ant consciousness feels like, but since the ant brain is entirely untouched by this infection, I can only conclude that these poor guys are consciously witnessing their own march to death. While they climb up to a plant, they're probably thinking the ant equivalent of shit 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 before they bite into the vein of a leaf for food for the fungus and die, sprouting this fungal fruiting body from their little ant necks. But what about the human clickers in the game? And an MRI of the brain shows no evidence of fungal growth in the limbic regions, which would normally accompany the prodrome of aggression in infected patients. In the game, the Cordyceps fungus does seem to work by taking over parts of the brain. Ellie's surgeon is amazed by the absence of fungal growth in Ellie's limbic system. Now, the limbic system is the part of our brain where we feel and process emotions. It's very instinctive. It is even often called the lizard brain because this is the part of the brain that we share with all animals, even lizards. Consciousness, on the other hand, is believed to be present in the cerebral cortex, more the outer layers of the brain, while the limbic system is all the way in the center. So what would a limbic system takeover look like? We might expect an individual who is extremely aggressive and incapable of controlling their emotions, fearful and instinctively behaving, kind of like an animal, which is exactly what clickers do. However, there is a real-life case of a person who has suffered an almost complete loss of his limbic system and survived, and though he's lost his memory and his sense of smell and taste, what he hasn't lost is his consciousness. He's described by his family members as always happy, and he has an IQ of 106 and performs completely normally on speaking, language, and writing tests. To me, this pretty clearly shows that even if the limbic system gets invaded and our emotional control is out of our hand, consciousness is still present. So that's pretty conclusive to me. Of course, the question now is whether the full brain is actually present in clickers, and I will say their heads look pretty messed up, but to have the amount of control that they have over the body, the vast majority of brain tissue would be needed. So I'm gonna say the majority of the cerebral cortex has to be present. For them to be able to function. So clickers are most likely experiencing their own terrifying version of consciousness. So yes, those original people are still there, experiencing a constant panic, horror, and aggression, much like a rabbit dog. Or a rabbit human, for that matter. Thanks for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and make sure to check out this other video that I made and of course don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you can always be up to date about other stuff that I'm filming.